Okay, in this week's video, we're gonna be discussing the pros and cons of being a full-time travel photographer, uh, pre-2020, let's call it, but hopefully we will do so again in the future. Let's do this. Okay, for those of you who don't know who I am, my name is James Kerwin. I am a primarily an architectural interior photographer. Uh, I used to do events, weddings, and uh, also architecture back in the UK prior to leaving the UK in January of 2019 to travel nomadically full time. Okay, so this is something a little bit different. Um, I thought it'd be good to talk about the pros and the cons, of pros versus the cons um, of traveling full time as a photographer. So at every point, I may give the positive and then obviously the flip side to that, uh, things for you to think about. I'll probably try and end though on a positive note. So the first one is see amazing places. Of course, um, traveling full time allows you to see amazing places, probably many more places than the average person if you were say on a two week, 10 day, two week holiday. It's a really good way of doing things because you can kind of like base yourself somewhere, really get to grips with a country. I think you discover more this way. The flip side to that, of course, is some poverty and horrid conditions. Uh, there's places like that I've been, like Abkhazia, uh, places in Lebanon, South Africa, and Southeast Asia, where actually the horrid conditions are sometimes you know, a bit overwhelming. It can be quite nasty seeing people living in this manner. I do try my best to sort of support locals where possible, and certainly being based in countries like Georgia, where I currently am, it allows me to put back into the local economy as well, which I, I believe helps. The next one is to photograph or to witness some of the world's best events. Um, and what I mean by that is if you're in a place, say, for two weeks, and then you're due to come home on the Saturday, let's say, on the Sunday, Chinese New Year might start, and then you've sort of missed that huge event. Or it could be that we've recently had a comet which I've, I've witnessed here in Georgia. I know we've seen that all around the world, but having sort of events around the world, it allows you to, if you're traveling full time, you can actually base yourself there and see some of these world events. Um, the flip side of that is probably a little bit of something you thought about, which is if events are going on, sometimes not being able to afford the accommodation is the flip side. So for instance, we were in Taiwan in January, Chinese New Year, and we noticed the accommodation costs were getting really expensive towards the end of our 10 day trip. We were gonna be there actually originally for maybe three weeks, and we realized we couldn't afford it because the price of the accommodation was skyrocketing. Obviously Chinese New Year is a, a time when lots of family members come together and travel uh, all throughout um, you know, a country such as Taiwan. Okay, the next point is, for me anyway, personally, is seeing the hidden gems that our planet has to offer. And there is lots of them, be it one of the top 10 waterfalls in the world in Lebanon, or be it some sort of amazing ghost town hidden in the desert in the UAE. Um, I love this kind of stuff, that's kind of what I shoot anyway, and seeing that kind of stuff, but being on the road full time, it allows you to see more of this stuff. You can constantly go and see it um, and plan your trips around it. There isn't really a con to this one. Um, I suppose the only thing for it is, is because of my love for off the beaten path locations, I'll sometimes, when I visit a trip or country, say again, let's take Taiwan for example, I miss the east of the country because I didn't have time to get there on a 10 day trip. You know, sometimes it's the, the negative. Um, you may miss the country's highlights or some of the country's highlights because you've been doing off the beaten path work as well. So yeah, with that one, sort of like, yeah, it's with the territory. The next one sort of ties into that really, and it is uh, better locations um, or access to better locations when you're on the road full time. And what I mean by that is you can go to spots say over four mornings or five mornings, uh, as opposed to say when you're on a 10 day trip, you can only visit once or maybe twice. You may be able to return back the following day, um, but that isn't um, always the case. So I, th I think when you travel full time, you can really focus on your photography. You can go to a location multiple mornings. Let's take Coleman Scott, for example, in Namibia. I visited over four mornings and it allowed me to get different light and good results and take the best of those results for my final portfolio pieces. 
Okay, the negative for this one, I would say there isn't really too many. Um, really, it may be to do with if you're staying in a location for a longer period, it may well cost more. For instance, Namibia that I just mentioned, obviously it's quite an expensive country for accommodation, uh, and being based in four days uh, you know, in, a, in, a, in an area may end up co costing a little bit more than it should. Um, but I don't think it's a huge negative, and I think the results of the positive work outweighs the cost of the more expensive accommodation. I mean, at the end of the day, you'd be going home anyway. And for when you're nomadic, it doesn't matter if your accommodation costs a little bit more because it's ups and downs, peaks and troughs, you know? Okay, the next one uh, is that life feels exciting every day. You wake up and you've got your own day to plan ahead. Uh, you may want to go out and shoot. You may want to edit some work. You may want to answer your emails. It's exciting, different, varied uh, workflow. And I think that's pretty cool. Obviously, until 2020 came along when there was one challenge after another after another. A negative of this one is my friends, unfortunately. Some friends drift away, photography friends, people you don't see as often, you can't plan trips with. Um, they drift away, or maybe they don't support the work you did. Unfortunately, the world is quite a jealous place. Uh, and I think um, when you go and do something like take the plunge and go onto the road full time, you're always going to lose contacts and friends. Some people think, I, I want to do that. Why can't it be me? Well, my advice to you is it can always be you. Of course, this year isn't a great example, but I feel like as things recover, there's going to be more nomadic people out there working remotely. And why can't it be you? OK, the next one is about working hours. I love having flexible working hours. Um, I don't really, I love the fact that I'm now self-employed. I've been doing it for over two and a half years. Uh, it's quite difficult sometimes, of course, financially. I think that's when my hair started going gray is the financial troubles. And especially at the start when you're coming up with your ideas and 2020 hasn't helped. But in the same instance, um, I love having flexible working. You know, do I want a day off today? Do I want to go out and shoot? Do I want to go up a hill point? whatever, a viewpoint over the city. There's lots of reasons. Um, things can change. Do you want to go and have a beer tonight? It is a Friday, so maybe. Um, but really, you get my point. Flexible working is amazing, and, and it's something I really recommend. The flip side to this is you do find yourself doing seven-day weeks and late nights. Uh, so it's a short flip, flip note. Especially when it's your own venture, I think you really want to put your passion and your heart into it. So I think the flip side is definitely the late nights. Okay, the next one is, again, to do with working, really. Um, you get to edit and work in some amazing locations, cafes, bars, uh, could even be apartments, hotels, which I'll, I'll get onto in a minute, but that's a real positive. I think you can really uh, change your working environment, and it gives you motivation. If you go to a trendy cafe, I remember we went to one in Malaysia that was really cool to work in, uh, and it really made us productive, you know, so I, something I recommend uh, seeking out is cool locations. The flip side to that is some of those locations can be more expensive than others. Uh, take, for example, a co-working space. Some of them I find to be quite expensive. I know the ones here in Tbilisi are pretty new, but it's another cost that I can't really you know, put in, especially in the first couple of years and, and definitely not in 2020. So the flip side is sometimes they're expensive or they have poor internet as well. Poor internet is something that we're going to cover later, but I find that the internet tends to be best on 4G or in apartments, uh, not always in these cafe environments, but of course there is exceptions. That then leads me nicely on to uh, living in some stunning apartments or hotels. Of course you move a lot, you're nomadic, right? Uh, the thing is, is I like that in a way, you get to see and experience some amazing apartment blocks, viewpoints, um, I know last year we stayed in an apartment in here in Tbilisi, and you could access the roof, that allowed some amazing rooftop views, record some video content, shoot some photos, it was a really good experience. The flip side of this one, of course, is sometimes you'll turn up and it's not as advertised. And what I mean is it's sometimes a, yeah, a damp squid in that it's a bit of a dump. It doesn't look like the pictures. Maybe it's older than the pictures, stuff like this. There's lots of flip sides. Um, but really, if you do your research properly, there's some great examples on Airbnb, Booking.com. And nowadays, with it being 2020, I find you can contact hosts and actually negotiate a better deal as well. The next one's got to be about meeting people. Uh, certainly in 2019, when I was running photo tours and trips uh, around Georgia, Armenia, uh, and Lebanon, um, I found that planning those trips and then taking people on those trips led to some amazing meetings. Uh, new people, exciting people, new topics to discuss, and also some really interesting folk good at different techniques. And nobody's perfect, nobody's good at editing, nobody's good at shooting. You know, there is exceptions to those rules but you know when you get to talk in a creative environment and meet new people I think that's a real positive. The flip side of that is unfortunately 2020. 
Um, it's made it be quite a lonely uh, year. Uh, Jade's a bit better at dealing with the kind of secluded moments than me. Um, I am a bit of a people person. I do like to meet and, and socialise with people. Um, and sometimes if you're in a country that doesn't speak the language, um, I think that can certainly make you miss your friends and family back at home. And that's certainly the case this year, unfortunately. Back to images and photography. I think... Um, Focus, when your focus is full-time on the job, it's always going to lead to better work. If you think of any full-time professional landscape photographer, for instance, your focus is full-time, you can plan your shoots better, and that leads to, obviously, better images. The flip side to that one, unfortunately, is a working schedule is kind of hard to keep. And what I mean by that is you could be editing, admin, learning, creating YouTube content, stock uploading. The schedule is hard to pull together, and I think that's something that is a real challenge not so much a negative, I think it's just a challenge on how you adapt yourself and apply it to your work. And the final tip then, uh, the final thing I want to talk about is working with what you have. Now this, this more than any other year applies because um, I went away in 2019 with a laptop that's five years old at that point, it's now six years old, over six years old. Uh, I went away with an M Canon M50 that I'm recording this video on my Canon 5DSR as well. All of these things were probably due for change this year and I was planning on changing some of that kit. I went away with certain microphones, I went away with certain lighting equipment and I think you have to work with what you have. So it gets you better using the gear that you have to create content. The flip side of course is that you then don't have, especially when a pandemic hits, uh, the tools you have to do a certain job. So I knew then I wanted to create more YouTube videos when we got back to Georgia and that meant that I had to you know, use lighting that I had available. Luckily, Jay bought a ring light uh, back in the summer of last year for another project, and that meant that I could light my face, but that's not ideal. Really, I'd prefer to have some sort of aperture lighting or constant lighting source, a soft box or some description to light me up. Um, so again, it's uh, not having the gear you have, or not having the gear that you need for certain projects is definitely the flip side of this. I hope you've enjoyed that video. It's something a little bit different. Uh, if you want to know more about a nomadic lifestyle as a photographer, maybe I can do another one of these videos. I'm, I'm, I'm open to doing so. If you've got any questions, please do leave them in the comments section below. I'll be happy to answer them and I'll ensure to come back to you. If you want to see more content like this, I usually upload on a Thursday and a Sunday. You can actually hit the subscribe uh, button down below and make sure the bell is ticked so that you kind of get notified when I upload new content. It tends to be a sit down video once a week and then something in the field, uh, either on a Thursday or a Sunday. I kind of mix it up, depends what I feel like. Uh, but yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Until next time, if you've seen something you like in this video, perhaps you can share it with a friend. And if not, definitely tickle the like button. Until next time, bye bye for now.